Hi, this is the fourth of six sessions about MQP 1.0 and in this session I'm going to talk about flow control um, in uh, transfers of messages. We've so far talked about um, the frames open, begin and attach, um, about de uh, detach and end and close and also in the previous one we talked about transfer and disposition. What we haven't talked about yet is uh, about uh, flow and uh, Disposition and transfer obviously play a role in this, so we're going to go and revisit those. There's two models of flow control that are already mentioned, so let's go and revisit them. Session flow control, that is about platform resource management. We have each session endpoint has an incoming and outgoing transfer window defining an upper bound for messages in transit. How much, how many messages the, the either party is willing to handle in memory at the same time, which defines a flow control model. The window size is expressed in frame count. So the most foundational um, throttling mechanism is in the connection. The connection defines the maximum frame size that either party is willing to handle, and those can differ. And now either party says, this is how many copies of messages of this frame size I can go and handle in my incoming window and in my outgoing window. Each transfer decrements that remaining window by one, because it's expressed in frames. And when the window size is zero, then all the transfers are being suspended. Um, you update those transfer sizes with the flow gesture, which we're gonna learn about in a second. So that's window-based control. Link flow control, each link, uh, then again, you can have multiple links. They are, or many, many, many links on a session, um, has associated link credit. And that link credit is being booked again using the flow frame, over on the other party, so on the, um, on the um, kind of other side of that link, um, on the sender effectively. And um, when the link credit, remaining link credit is greater than zero, then messages can flow. And only the receiver can manipulate that link credit value. So the receiver is in control of uh, booking and subtracting that link credit. A link credit of uh, smaller than zero or zero uh, suspends that flow immediately. So that's session flow control, link flow control. So why do we need two of those? Session flow control protects the platform. So that's something that deals with memory buffers, it deals with how much throughput you want to have on your system. So it allows you to dial throughput, it allows you to dial memory consumption, so it guards the platform from um, over committing um, resources to an MQP link. And that is true in the same way to small and tiny devices as it is to hyperscale system that, hyperscale systems that need to deal with millions of concurrent connections. Um, it, the link flow control is very different from that. It happens at the link level. And that is actually protecting the application from having too much data and from getting too much data. And also specifically supports API gestures as you will see in a moment. So it guards the application node, so your process from taking more messages that it can currently handle, and also allows to tune the number of messages to, let's say, the number of threads you have running to handle um, concurrent messages. And it enables a number of API gestures in a very interesting way without having to have a specific gesture for receive and batch receive and all those different kinds of things. It just does that very elegantly by managing flow control. So here's um, a few API patterns, four of them. One is uh, imperative receive, um, that's uh, up there on the uh, left hand, left upper corner. The receiver goes and flows one link credit. And that one link credit is satisfied by a single message. And therefore we have a single receive. So we have a receiver says receive, and in, in the, on the API level, that translates into booking a credit over on the other side, and then um, the message flows back that satisfies that credit, end of the receive operation on a particular link. You can go this and do this in parallel of many links. So if you, have, if you want to receive messages from different queues, you have different threads, different queues, and you're all channeled through a single session over a single connection, every single one of those gestures can park an independent receive um, on uh, different entities on service bus, and that's actually uh, on, on the messaging infrastructure in, in service bus, sorry, um, for instance, that's exactly what we do. We have um, 
uh, with pool connections effectively, the single messaging factory as we call it in our API, um, is uh, managing that connection and then um, we are doing multiple receivers in parallel all hanging off that same connection and they go and manage their individual flows and other products, obviously other clients do that um, in exactly the same way. Now we go over to um, the, the reactive model, also the, um, on the upper level on the right, you have an observer, the observer subscribes and uh, provides a callback. Well, in that case, you don't have a mechanism to do individual receives. So what you'll do, then do is uh, you have a concurrent operations limit. How many messages can your threat, your call, your calling, um, your thread pool handle at the same time? And then you'll go and just park the appropriate link, link credit on the other side. And then you're going to get as many messages as you can go and do concurrent operations and as the concurrent operations complete, you then keep booking more link credit kind of in, in further flow gestures, but you always keep as enough messages around so that um, all of your concurrent processing loops are being busy. From a um, client perspective, so that's the lower left, um, the, um, the receiver for Q will go and simply park ample credit on the other side for the sender. Um, it will kind of provide a, how many, a delta for how many messages it wants to accept at the same time. Let's say a hundred or a thousand messages that are being okay to be accepted into the queue. Um, and also depending on that's a tunable value, obviously, and can also be dynamically tuned. Like how much mess, how many messages can I expect in, um, in flight from that particular client? And then the client just goes and sends uh, and satisfies those um, those messages. And then the queue can also push back and say stop by booking um, link credit of zero, which we're going to see um, in the next slide. And then you can do sophisticated things like setting a prefetch limit. So the receive that you have up, um, up on the corner, um, that is not booking one link credit, but you have a prefetch limit so that whenever you call receive for the first time, you book 10 link credits, the link credits fill up a buffer, and now you can go and satisfy receive operations from a local buffer rather than doing every receive across the wire and then kind of keep prefetching messages like this. And that's all done using this flow gesture. Um, application timeouts and cancellation and pause. So when the queue wants to say stop, or when you have a receive operation that's about to time out, um, there's two models to do this. So the first one is, um, let's stick with receive that's on the left you go and flow and you park one link credit and now you have a receive timeout and that receive timeout is now nearing. So you say, I have 60 seconds, nothing, nothing came, there's no message that satisfied um, that credit. You will then send, as the 60 seconds draw near, you will go and send another flow that says drain equals true. And drain means send me everything you have in your hands right now and then send the link credit to zero. So if a message arrives just as the clock strikes 60 seconds, that can still be satisfied using a transfer, and then otherwise the link credit goes to zero and stops. Um, the other model is an absolute stop now. So you have a link credit one, time passes, and you send link credit from, of zero over to the other side, and uh, what that means is no matter what you have right now, stop, don't send, send any, any messages anymore. So you can go and do a graceful shutdown effectively of that current uh, credit, or you can do an absolute stop um, depending on how you want it um, by just using a different parameter on that flow gesture. So that's uh, flow control and MQP for you. And uh, in the next session, we will talk about MQP on the wire and specifically there about primitive types.